I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, hard talk with a matrix of newsmakers. The headlines. On the heels of Greece's elections, another ballot box test of austerity policies in the Eurozone. Portugal's economy is growing again after a bailout and tough reforms. The elections could see the center-left and governing center-right each taking about a third of the vote for the Communist Party as a potential kingmaker. The communists got a lift from anger over the country's 12% jobless rate. Nearly 20% of the population is on the brink of poverty, the highest since 2004. Will backlash against belt tightening topple Portugal's government? Or can its leaders persuade weary voters not to roll back the budget cuts? Wired into this edition of the network here at the European Parliament in Brussels, Paolo Rangel. Vice Chair of the Center-Right European People's Party and a member of, the, of Portugal's governing Social Democrats. Marisa Matias, a member of the European United Left, Nordic Green Left in the Parliament, and of the Left Bloc in Portugal. And Pascal Joana, head of the Robert Schuman Foundation, a think tank based in Brussels and Paris. Welcome to all of you. A question to all of you, starting with uh, Paolo. Portugal is back to growth. But poverty and unemployment are still high, and young people are fleeing. We've got statistics showing a record 400,000 fled last year out of a country of 10 million. How does a government survive in those conditions? Well, a government survive, uh, because, will survive because we have a very, very tough situation of ramp, uh, bankruptcy, and we have really turned uh, the, this situation. So you had... A, almost 18% of an employment rate, now you have 12% or uh, uh, what is the rate of, before the Troika came to Portugal. The mood of the country has changed and people now see that it was worthable to do this e effort. Okay, Marisa, what's your take on this? How does the government survive? I think that we saw it just right now. It's science fiction, propaganda. We are listening over and over the same data. But in fact, the unemployment rate is decreasing just in a, in a very fake way. Okay, Pascal? I think it's possible to the government to survive because we see in the UK four months ago that the government be elected, and two days ago, Tsipras was re-elected. So the fact is the government has made the reform, mm. the, the, the Portugal get out the international plan, the recovery is on the trend, the trend is on the recovery. The rating of the Portugal is BB plus now for two days ago by uh, SNP. Right. So maybe the, the, the voters, the Portugal voters can say, okay, you continue the job. Because the government exited its 78 billion euro bailout program last year. After pay and pension cuts as well as tax hikes, it returned to the international financial markets and now benefits from ultra low borrowing rates. But at what cost to the country, Marisa? A huge cost, because honestly the bailout was defined in order to reduce the public debt and the deficit, and the debt has increased a lot over these last years, so we were around 90% and now is around 130%. Paolo, how do you get voters to, to decide to hold the line here? What I'd like to say is that this, uh, there was really costs, so people have to do very huge sacrifices. But at the end uh, of this program, they started to see that we are recovering. I see Marisa shaking her head there. What? No, it, because it is not true. People are not living better. No matter how many figures you can try to, there were, to use, there were, there, there were improvements which are fake improvements. What you, in see, what you have to see is that Spain is recovering, Ireland is recovering, Portugal is recovering. So who have made these efforts is now in we, a good trend. Even the UK is a very good let, example. Let me, go, let, me, let me go to Pascal. Just, Pascal, how do you see this now? My, my feeling is they made some part of a job. The recovery is here, even if the economy is weak. But the recovery is here, and maybe the voters say, OK, you have made so many reforms now that you have to go to finish the job. Yeah, but there's a, lot, there's a large undecided vote, roughly a third. Yes, like, 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 in, many countries, you, like yeah. in many countries, but you, you, see, you see the survey and you say, it's not very evident that the opposition will win because the government failed on this recovery uh, economy. But, but there, were, there were no reforms. There were no structural reforms. There was no there fiscal consolidation. I'm sorry. If there's something happening outside 
of the blue, there we, we will have ever, ever conditions to react to that. And Paulo knows that, no, that we are I, not prepared. I would like to say that there were, of course, there were not the re structural reforms no, that the left bloc and the Communist weren't. Party want. Of course, no, we, we don't want to leave the euro. We don't want. But I don't want to we, leave the euro. We, we, we don't want. We don't want. We don't want to to, to have uh, a debt uh, cut in a huge manner, in a simple manner that is impossible in Europe. You just we have reformed the that. rent market, the labour market, the justice system, the health system, the education system. Okay. Of course, there's a lot to do, and that is the reason in, we are more, trusting in, in the vote for the next mandate. I just want to say sorry. Can, can, you us, uh, can you give us? Can you give us sort of a hopefully a neutral view of how far these reforms have gone, how far they got to go? We see that the Portugal was in a very weak situation four, four years ago, and they get out of this international plan. So if they succeed to get out, it's, a, it's, it's that the economy is better. What about, what about the, the, the televised debate between socialist leader Antonio Costa, who accused center-right Prime Minister Pedro Passos Coelho of failing to reduce the country's debt and of cutting public employee salaries? The Prime Minister shot back that the previous government, led by the socialists, doubled the debt. So who won that face-off, Paolo? Well, what is clear is that, of course, if you have a bailout where you have to borrow 78,000 uh, million euros, you will increase the debt in the short run. So the decrease of the debt will start only now. It's starting now. That is natural. And uh, you, as you know, there was a lot of debt that was not really uh, included in the official numbers because it was from public enterprises. So all these... A cleaning of the system was done, and so now are in conditions to start to reduce the debt in a very consistent way. Are you, so you're saying your head there? Not even one of the targets of the bailout program was achieved. Not That's even one. Why we Not exit. even one. Okay. They are saying for four years that the debt will be reduced, but the major debt level in the target, in the, the uh, target program was 114 percent. Okay. We are around 130. Right. Maybe, maybe I, can, I can make the, the two of them uh, okay. uh, on, on the same basis, because the crisis begins with the socialist government. Okay, yeah. with uh, Mr. Sokratz. Okay, yeah. and it, 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 it begins it begin with him, not with the new government. And the new government irritated this situation. And the opposition today, of course, they are the beginners of that, and they have some weak uh, problem because of Mr. Sokratz problem with the justice. Okay, what, la, la, last question. What if, what if Costa and, and, and his, his uh, coalition came to power? He has vowed to roll back austerity policies, halt fire sales of the country's assets, reverse laws on hiring and firing workers. Could that turn away investors at a critical time? And could he be forced uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the European Union, by the Eurozone, to actually comply with certain policies or face disaster, as Mr. Tsipras uh, in Greece was forced to do. Marisa. What we saw in Greece was a huge blackmail. I think every citizen now knows. If we want to have some kind of democracy and still think about the European Union as a union of democratic states, there's the need for have some kind of ownership in terms of the measures. But honestly, I don't think that the option in Portugal is between the current coalition and the Socialist Party. They were the three responsible for the situation that we are now. Okay, Paolo, how well, do you see What that? I must say is that I, I really fear what Costa's plans and uh, the Socialist plans and programs want to do. We have the job done. Now we should be very prudent. So we want to increase and to improve our situation, but in a consistent and prudent manner. That is the difference for the socialists that will risk all the efforts and all the sacrifices that we have made and that have uh, given to Portugal the present situation that is much better than four years ago. Pascal, last word. Yes, the, the scrutiny is very open. But the former election in some other countries show that when the, the, the coalition is very near to the opposition, the, go the outgoing government is winning, like in the UK and in Greece last, last month. So I, I think it's maybe, it will be maybe the case for Portugal, but it is very open. It is very open, Pascal. That's all the time we've got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Paolo Rangel, Marisa Matias, and Pascal Joana. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with the network.